Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I got a top 5 video for you guys on GTA Online, and on the weekend I will have a lore video coming out for GTA 4, but on today's video I want to talk about the top 5 vehicles with hidden secret abilities. So these are vehicles that have some secret abilities that the game doesn't really explain to you that well, and I've noticed a lot of players actually don't know about these, and a lot of these vehicles are also pretty underrated. Some of these vehicles aren't the best, but they do have some useful abilities that a lot of people don't know about. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Top five vehicles with secret hidden abilities and if you guys enjoy these top five videos please do drop a like on on it it does help me to make more content like this but let's start off the video Starting off at number 5, we have the Volatile, which can carry 100 bombs. And the Volatile goes for a regular price of $3,724,000, uh, or you can get it for a trade price of $2,800,000 if you actually complete air defense to set up for Act 3 of the Doomsday Heist. Now, about the Volatile is when people fly this aircraft, they basically, you know, make fun of it. They call it a Dorito. They say that this aircraft, you know, is a giant target, which, to be fair, it kind of is. However, though... Do you happen to know that the Volatile actually carries 100 bombs? It's the only aircraft that I know of. I'm pretty sure there is no other aircraft that carries 100 bombs. The Volatile is really the only one that carries 100 bombs. Not even the RO-86, another similar aircraft that came out with the Cayo Perico Heist, which is a pretty big aircraft. Not even that one carries 100 bombs. So this carries 100 bombs. And the Volatile is actually a pretty fast jet also for being a pretty large one. As you can see, I'm doing dug and shipments right here. Because this carries much more bombs than normal, you can actually hit a lot more targets, and so I like to drop bombs at 5, because if you just hold X versus pressing X or on the PlayStation or A on the Xbox, drops one bomb at a time. But I personally like dropping 5 in an order, and you can see I'm hitting moving boats, I'm even hitting helicopters in the air when I time it, when I fly right over them. So, Volatile, if you got a bomb a target, there's an area that you, you can keep flying back over, keep that in mind, it's got 100 bombs, so you can really bomb a lot with this thing. Next number four, we have the Torador, which costs $4,250,000, and this came with the Cayo Perico heist. There is no trade price for this vehicle. Now, we have specifically are talking about the Torador hidden caches and the sonar. So, the Torador, a lot of people actually use this vehicle. It's a very common vehicle that I see in free mode. A lot of people driving it around, um, using it to boost. People, whenever they use this vehicle, most of the time, they, they are either using it to do some ridiculous stunts, just jumping off hills with a boost, or they are using it to kill other players, specifically Oppressor Mark II, which Torador has some very accurate missiles that will take care of them really fast. However, though, what a lot of people actually don't know is that the Torador, once it goes underwater, it can activate sonar. Now, everyone knows that it's in an amphibious vehicle too, but people don't utilize the sonar ability. Now, what the sonar basically does is it reveals 10 hidden caches. These 10 hidden caches are randomized every, every real-life day. So once every real-life day, not game day, they respawn. And every cache that you pick up is $7,500. In total, you picking up all 10, you get $75,000. You can use the boost underwater with the Torador, but if you're going to be picking up these caches, I personally recommend just marking it on the map. Just see where the next cache is. Once you pick up one cache, see where the next cache is. Do what I do. Mark it on the map right here. And then what you do is just go on shore. Go on shore, follow the highway along the coast, and just boost. You actually get there faster than actually boosting underwater, and you just pick them up. If you're pretty quick with the, with this, you can probably finish this mission in about 15 to 20 minutes, but that's about 15 to 20 minutes for $75,000. It's still good, easy money, you don't really like to fight anybody. However, though, what I would personally recommend is not to get all 10 at once, but instead if you're just driving across the map. If you're driving across the map, you gotta get something, you gotta go to like maybe Sandy Shores from from Los Santos, check if there's any hidden caches along the water as you're going up there. Maybe you'll pick them up, and then wherever you're going, you know, you multitask. But that said, you know, Torridor has great sonar abilities that you can pick up hidden caches. And I know I'm going to have some people mention this. The Kasatka can also pick this up, and you can pick this up in other vehicles, but you won't use sonar. And also the submar the mini submarines in the Kasatka, but those aren't worth it because they just take too long. Torridor is the best bet for picking up hidden caches. Moving on to number three, we have the Ultralight, the RO-86, and also the Kasatka with off-the-radar abilities. Now, most people know about the Akula and the Stealth Helicopter having a stealth mode where you can go off the radar, but a lot of people actually don't know about these three vehicles here. So let's start off here with the Ultralight. The Ultralight came out with the Smuggler's Run update in August of 2017, and you can purchase it for $665,000 or for a trade price of $500,000 if you complete three air freight cargo missions. So complete those missions, you get some money from the cargo and also get a discount in the vehicle. Now, once you put on this propeller here, costs an extra $300,000, you will actually be 
able to go off radar. Now to go off radar, you actually have to either glide with this thing or you have to slowly tap the acceleration that you're not going too fast and you will be off the radar. You'll be hidden from other players no matter your height. Now, to tell if you're off the radar, you basically just gotta look at your map. If you see your arrow actually blinking, that means that you are off the radar. And this is, you know, a great vehicle to be able to get away from a lot of players. A lot of people actually don't use it. And it, does, it's not, it doesn't really have the potential to grief either. It has a useful machine gun that you can aim 360 all around, but really it can't be used to grief. So that's what I like about it. Now, also, you can see right here my friend, and I thank my friend Trio Knight. He takes off in his ultralight disappears from the radar right there. Uh, next vehicle that we have is we have the RO86 Alkanost. Now the RO86, this came out with the Cayo Perico um, heist update and it costs 4,350,000 but you can get it for a trade price of $3,262,500 if you uh, complete the Cayo Perico heist with the RO86 approach. Now this thing to go off radar instead of you know flying it slowly you can actually fly any speed you want but you basically have to be at a certain height and that altimeter altimeter that you actually have on the side of your screen when you go over that first line right there you will basically be off the radar now to tell that you are off the radar same exact thing the arrow that your little arrow on the map that's that's meant to represent you will be blinking if that's blinking you are off the radar however though just note if you fly over certain um certain if the elevation gets a little bit higher, if you fly over certain mountains and hills, or even fly over buildings, then you will appear on the radar. So just keep that in mind. If the ground is even, and you stay above that first little line there, you will uh, you will not be on the radar. But if you fly over something where you're a little bit closer to the ground, then you will start appearing on the radar. So just keep that in mind. Be over that, that first line at all times. And you can see right here my friend Sebi. I thank him for help here. He took my Alkanost, and he doesn't appear on the radar. So his indicator, player indicator, is gone. I still see the Alkanost because it's my personal vehicle, but his player indicator is gone. This is another vehicle that if you're actually getting chased by other players, you can actually just fly around above just to frustrate them. And again, this vehicle can't really be used for griefing. Can bomb, sure, but I can't really imagine somebody griefing with this, which makes it a perfect off-the-radar vehicle. And the last one here is the Kasatka. The Kasatka cost $2,200,000, came out with the Cayo Perico update. Now, the Kasatka, to go off the radar, all you basically got to do is just hide underwater right here. It's a little bit underwater, just where the whole thing is pretty much underwater. Even if it's close to the surface, you will go off the radar. And again, if you see your arrow blinking, you're off the radar. You can see right here my friend Sebi's game. He sees me. I disappear from the map. So that's, so that's it. So these three vehicles have off the radar abilities, but a lot of people actually might not know about them. At number two, we have the Thruster can avoid all vehicle missiles. So the Thruster Jetpack is a vehicle that actually came out with the Doomsday Heist back in the December of 2017, but I bet a lot of people actually still don't know about this. And this, I'm not positive whether this is a glitch or not. It might be, but regardless, the thruster can avoid pretty much all vehicle missiles. And this is actually a great way to just make, you know, hostile pilots and oppressor mark II griefers really angry. But if you actually take the oppressor mark II, just take a look at this right here. I'm flying it in a straight line. If you just fly it in a straight line and you also try to gain altitude at the same time. So basically on the PS, um, on the PlayStation, you'll be holding R2 and pushing forward on the stick or um, pushing forward on the stick and holding RT on the Xbox, if you just push it forward and you just hold, you know, you, you hold the altitude button to gain altitude, you will not, you will be able to pretty much dodge every single missile. Just take a look at this. My friend right here is in a Starling. He's trying to fire a bunch of missiles at me just to test this. Every single missile miss, misses. So even if they're in another aircraft and they're shooting at you and they're firing, locking onto you, hitting you with a bunch of missiles, the missiles will not reach you. They will not they will not blow you up. They'll explode right before they hit your jetpack. Again, I'm not sure why this happens. However, though, this doesn't stop them from hitting you manually. They could try to hit you with machine guns, or if they actually hit you with a manual missile, then it actually might hit you. But if it's, a, it's an auto-lock missile, it's not going to hit you. And the exact same thing happens with the Oppressor Mark II. Take a look at this. Uh, my friend Sebi is on an Oppressor Mark II trying to hit me cannot hit me. And so I have wasted a lot of Oppressor Mark II Griefer's time just by doing this. I just fly in a straight line. They can't hit me, waste all their missiles. It, they give up, makes them pretty mad. Before I reveal the number one hidden ability in vehicles that a lot of people actually don't know about, I want to make a few special mentions. Special mention number one 
is that the Stealth Annihilator actually has a repelling option. Now, if you are actually in the back passenger of the Stealth Annihilator, if the pilot actually gets kind of low to the ground, but not completely, you can actually repel them. You would hold square on the PlayStation once you get a prompt for this, or you would hold X on the Xbox. Now, a lot of people actually don't utilize this, uh, I, and it doesn't really have that many uses to be fair, but I could see it being useful when you're trying to drop somebody off on a specific rooftop where you can't, where it's tight and you can't land a helicopter, or if you're actually trying to drop somebody in like an alley. It's, this could be useful for dropping off a player in a really tight spot with a helicopter. Special mention number two is a pretty quick one, and I want to thank my friend Burb Bear for helping me with this, but with the Valkyrie, did you know that you can actually just switch sides just by holding right in the D-pad? That's all you pretty much got to do. So if you're good with the minigun on this, and you, you can kill a lot of players, and you can possibly kill uh, AI, but just know the Valkyrie gets blown up in one RPG hit. But if you want to shoot on the other side, just hold right in the D-pad, and you just switch. Switch, that's it. Just hold right in the D-pad and switch guns. As long as there's not somebody there, you can just switch sides quickly. And our final special mention right here is that the Terabyte, the Avenger, the MOC, and the Acid Lab, and the Kasatka can all make you lose an instant wanted level. Now, I know I've talked about this a lot in my guides before, but I just wanted to make this a special mention considering this is a vehicle ability that a lot of people don't know about. Now, again, not sure whether this is a glitch. I think it's this is not necessarily a glitch, but it's more of that when you get into these vehicles, it's like a specific instance. It's like a different world when you're inside them, and that's probably why you lose the cops. But just look, whenever you get a five-star wanted level, any kind of wanted level, even if it's five-star, if you spawn these vehicles and the vehicle actually lets you get in the back of it, because during certain missions you can't get in, but if it does actually let you get back in, into it in free mode, you will instantly lose the wanted level. So if you're in free mode and you're dealing with an annoying wanted level and you can't shake it, just call in one of these special vehicles get in the back, lose the one level instantly like that. And the secret hidden ability that a lot of players actually don't know about is the, the Akula and the Stealth Annihilator can drop down any wanted level to two stars. So as long as your wanted level isn't two stars, the Akula can drop any other higher one level down to two stars. And all you pretty much have to do to do that is to just turn on stealth mode. Even if the cops are in, right in front of you, it will still drop it down to a two star. Now, the reason that I think this is even more effective than the MOC, the Avenger, the Terabyte, Acid Lab, and Kasatka trick where you instantly lose the cops is that you can't always access those vehicles during a lot of missions. A lot of free mode missions will actually not allow you to access those vehicles, but this, you can access this, these vehicles pretty much whenever you want, as long as you're just not in heists. But other than that, you can access this for almost every single free mode uh, mission type. So just take a look at this. I get into my I get into my Akula right here with my friend, got five stars, I turn on stealth mode, look at that, drops it down to a two star one level, just like that. And now, you know, we go down to the uh, stealth annihilator, stealth annihilator does the exact same thing. You just activate stealth mode, drops it down to a two star, and once you are in two star, no more police helicopters will spawn because police helicopters only spawn at three stars, which means that you can just gain a lot of altitude, and when you're really high up, even when the cops are right below you, they will not see you, meaning you can lose them really quickly. That, or you can just fly over the ocean too to be able to lose them very fast. Now, also take a look at this. This mission, I personally hate this mission the most. Out of all the, you know, all of the casino prep missions, other than the, you know, the, the charges, I really don't like this mission, which is the, you know, retrieving the hacking equipment for Lester. And when, you know, you go to the news headquarters, and then even if you complete this mission, complete stealth, you will still have a wanted level right after it. And it's an annoying place to escape from because there's highways, you're going to get surrounded by cops. There's not that many places that you can actually hide. But if you actually get an Akula, if you spawn it, drive to it, or you actually, better yet, have the Akula waiting for you right outside, you just get into it, you just drop that uh, wanted level down to a two-star, and you can just fly right back to your arcade. So, I think a lot of people actually personally don't know this about the Akula and the Stealth Annihilator. They know about how it takes you off the radar, but they don't know about how it actually will drop down your one level really quickly. And I personally think it's a very useful feature. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do drop a like. It does help me to make more content like this. If there's a specific top five or a top ten that you'd like me to make on this game, please let me know in the comments. I'm always open to suggestions. So thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.